Are you ready to try and factorize these trinomials? Well, what makes these trinomials extra tricky is that the number in the front is no longer a 1. In my time of tutoring, I have observed that no students like to do these. However, there is a simple technique that you can follow, and once you practice it and you get the hang of it, you'll see it's actually not that bad at all. So let's take a look at number 1. So what we used to do in previous trinomials is we always used to look at this number and then we would break that number up into all of its factors and then somehow try and use those numbers to make this one. However, when the number in the front is no longer a 1, such as when you have something like this, notice there's an imaginary 1 there, then you have to look at this number as well. So we're going to look at this number and this number and somehow come up with a combination that will give us minus 7. So what we can do is the following. We can open up some type of cross like that and we can look at the number in the front which is the 2 and you break the 2 up into all of its factors. Well we know that 1 times 2 is 2 and then you should when you're doing this technique you should also do the reverse. 2 times 1 is also 2. On this side, we're going to do the 4, so we know that 1 times 4 is 4, 4 times 1, and 2 times 2. What we now do is we choose a number over here, and then we choose another number over here. Now, in the beginning, we're not really going to be that good. Well, we, we're going to have to take a bit of time to practice, and eventually you'll become really fast at choosing the right numbers. But let's just practice for now. So choose a number in the front. So let's say we choose a 2 over here, okay, and we choose this 1 over here. So 2 times 1 is 2. Now what you do is you choose a number in this block and a number over here. However, before you just choose some numbers, you have to choose the number that is directly above or below the number you've already chosen. So in this blue or turquoise block, you have to choose the 1 because that's directly below the 2. And then in this red block, you have to choose the 4. So we've just chosen a 1 and a 4. And 1 times 4 is 4. Now what you do is you look at these two numbers over here and you're going to have to pause this video at home and watch it a few times. Many things in life, especially maths, you're going to have to watch it at least one or two times to fully understand it. Not many humans can just watch it and understand it straight away. Some, some types of concepts we can, but with this kind of concept, if you find yourself getting confused, that's fine. That happened to me many times when I was in school. Just pause, rewind, and then just watch it again and eventually you'll see it. It, it just sticks in your head and you understand it. So we look at the 2 and the 4 that we have here and we think to ourselves, could, could that 2 and that 4 ever give us this minus 7? Well, no, you could never combine a 2 and a 4 to give you a 7. Okay, so now we have to restart the whole process. Okay, so here's my little tip to you guys. We know that we need to get very close to 7, okay? So without doing that whole process the whole time, let's... Let's be smart about this. Check here. If we just have, because we know that we have to choose a number in this block and a number in this block. Well, look at the 2 and the 4. Straight away, that's going to give us 8. So we're pretty close to a 7. Okay, so we've just chosen the 2 times by 4, and that gave us 8. So we said that the other numbers that you choose have to be the 1 below and the 1 above. And if you multiply those two together, you get 1. Can 8 and 1 ever combine to give you minus 7? Well, yes, of course. So we've got the right numbers. So what you now do is you open up the brackets. The top numbers, so the 2 and the 1, they are going to go in the first bracket. So it's going to be 2x and 1. And the bottom numbers, they're going to go in the second bracket. So that's going to be 1x and 4. Now we need to try to choose whether it's pluses or negatives or a combination of both. Well, let's have a look. We know that if you had to multiply these two together, well, that's going to give you 8x. But we're trying to get close to minus 7. So let's make that a negative, because then you have 2x times by negative 4, which is already negative 8x. So we're pretty close. Then we can make this one over here a plus, because then it's going to be plus 1x. And what is negative 8x plus 1x? 
Well, that gives us negative 7x. And so that is the answer for that question. We're going to try another one in this video to help you practice this technique even further. So here we have another trinomial where the number in the front is not a 1. So we have to use this technique. So we look at the two numbers on the side, the 3 and the 4, and somehow they are going to give us an 8. So we open up this structure over here and we do the factors of 3. So that's 3 times 1 and 1 times 3. The factors of 4, 1 times 4. 4 times 1 and 2 times 2. So we want to try to get close to 8 as possible. So you could, for example, choose 3 and 4 and that gives you 12, which is pretty good. But then the other numbers always have to be the ones below and the one above. And 1 times 1 is 1. So you're going to be dealing with the numbers 12 and 1. And 12 and 1 can never give us 8. But then what we see, and, and, and I promise you, as you do this a few times, you'll get really fast. Here, if we choose this 3 and this 2, well, that already gives us 6. So 3 times 2 is 6. Then you have to choose the number below and the number above. And that's 2 times 1, which is 2. And can 6 and 2 somehow combine to make negative 8? Yes, they can. So we've chosen the correct numbers already. And so remember, the top numbers, they go in the first bracket. So 3x and 2. And the bottom numbers, they go in the second bracket. So that's going to be 1x and 2. Now, we're trying to make minus 8. So eventually this 3x and this 2 will multiply. And then these two are going to multiply. So 3x and 2. Do we want the answer to be negative 6x or positive 6x? Well, what's going to take us closer to that? Well, that's if it's negative 6x. Okay, so now we already have negative 6x. So do we want this part over here, which is going to be 2x, do we want that to be plus 2x? Like this. Or do we want it to be minus 2x? Well, we want it to be minus 2x because minus 6x minus 2x gives us minus 8x. And so we'll make this one a negative as well. 